Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump is making news for calling Secretary Hillary Clinton a bigot. Clinton first tried painting Trump as a racist as she tried to fend off attacks for a pay-for-play scheme at the Clinton Foundation. Trump responded by saying she's the one that's the bigot. So what does he mean by that? Donald Trump is here to go on the record. Thanks for joining us tonight, Mr. Trump. Well, thank you, Kimberly. All right, so people are asking, you know, you called um, Secretary Clinton a bigot, but you say she is the one actually using race baiting and pandering to get African-American voters. Do you still stand by that statement, or do you think the rhetoric has gone too far in the campaign? Well, I don't know too far or not. I can tell you that they have done, and she has done a terrible job for the African-Americans. You look at their numbers, you look at what's going on statistically, uh, 40 percent in poverty, 58 percent of African-American youth can't get jobs. It's on and on. You look at the crime rates, you look at education in the inner cities, you look at, uh, I mean, just take a look at what's happening with respect to crimes. And uh, it's, it's a terrible job that she has done, terrible job that the Democrats have done. They've run the inner cities for years, and look what you have. Uh, they're like war zones. In many cases, war zones, and in many cases, they're worse than war zones. Yeah, that's a real problem, I can tell you, um, having been uh, you know, a former prosecutor and working in areas like that, in gang um, areas and communities that you see really just the poverty and the violence going hand in hand, just crushing opportunity for people. Now, today you tweeted that you will... Worse. Yeah, that's and, the and problem. It's getting, it's mm -hmm. getting much worse. I, I mean, it's, it's at a level that we've never seen before. It just gets worse and worse, and all she wants to do is get the votes of the African Americans and the Hispanics, Get the votes, and then she'll say, uh, I'll see you in four, in four more years, because they are doing such a poor job in terms of education, crime, uh, jobs. I mean, you look at jobs. The jobs are a disaster. But it is a very, very sad thing. They want their votes, and they'll never hear from them again. All right, and you're making a direct play and outreach for that. And today I noticed a tweet that you said you're going to fix the failing poverty, crime, and educational statistics in these minority communities, which you said is Absolutely. largely a result of the local leadership. Um, you know, some of the worst cities, like you said, have Democratic mayors. Let me ask you this. In terms of some bipartisanship, will you be able to work with those mayors to try to resolve and fix some of these issues? Well, I think it would be, and I think we would be, but I will say that it will probably start changing around because once they see the improvement in crime, it's so unfair to have a mother walking down a street with a young daughter or a young boy and somebody gets shot, whether it's the mother or the child. It's happening all the time. You look at what's happening in the communities. You look at the, the tremendous violence, and we can stop that immediately. We can, over a longer period of time, fix the education. We can fix the jobs by bringing our jobs back into this country. Hillary Clinton can never do that. She doesn't have the ability to do that. She wouldn't know where to begin, and she doesn't want to do it because all she wants is their votes. And that's what's been happening for many years. And you're saying, why not give you a shot in the Republican Party? What do they have to lose? So that seems to be I resonating with it. people. I yeah. always say it. I say, I will do a great job. Give me a shot. I will do a great job. And you watch. I will do a fantastic job. Security, education, jobs. Nobody's going to be able to do it like I'm going to do it. All right, let's talk about another area of interest to me as a former prosecutor is the Clinton email scandal. Could this get worse? And do you have any idea about what Julian Assange is going to release? He's been saying this is going to be an October surprise of significance that could affect her campaign. He said if the media will cover it. I have no idea, but I can imagine that it would be very bad. But if you look, look how bad it is right now. But... It sounds like it's going to be very, very uh, earth-shattering. We'll see what happens. I will say this. Uh, when she deleted 33,000 emails, those emails had some really bad stuff on them. Because look at the ones that they found. And these are probably a lot worse. And then not only did they delete them, they used a method of deletion that you can never get them back. You saw that yesterday yes. for the first time. So she knew what she was deleting. It's a criminal act. She knew exactly what she was deleting. And, and using that kind of extensive, uh, you know, bleaching technique, et cetera, shows a consciousness of guilt, we would argue, well, it's very as expensive. a prosecutor. Yeah. It's very expensive, probably, uh, I don't know, foolproof. I, I don't know. I hear the NSA maybe has uh, the emails. A lot of people say NSA would have the emails if they really wanted to get them. But obviously they don't want to get them. They're protecting her. They're coddling her. And it's the only way she can even consider running. I mean, she shouldn't be allowed to run. 
But to use that method of getting rid of, uh, permanently rid of emails mm -hmm. that most people never even heard of, even sophisticated people never heard of it, and it's a very expensive. So she knows what was on those emails, and it was very, very bad. And maybe somebody should, in fact, ask the NSA whether or not they have the emails. All right, and to tag along to that, do you think that the FBI should actually open up a new investigation? Because we saw Comey really lay the case, make the case out, and then say, oh, but the DOJ should not prosecute her or file charges. But if there are new emails, perhaps the investigation should be reopened or a new one started. Well, it's very sad because everybody knew that she was very guilty in the last runaround, the last, the last uh, go around, I mm -hmm. guess you could say. And you look at what happened and you look at the way the ruling came down and it was shocking to people. In fact, everybody said, oh, wow, listen to that, listen to that. And then all of a sudden at the end, it was like, however, uh, we're not going to do anything. It was a very, very sad day, I think for law enforcement in this country. And believe me, the world is watching and the world is laughing. They can't believe that this is happening to the United States. And you say that you would be the law and order uh, candidate. And in fact, if you're elected the next president of the United States, would you continue this investigation into her email scandal? Well, I'll talk to you about that at a later date, but certainly that's something that would be a possibility. And we're looking at that very seriously. This is a very, very great mark on the United States, and people are very, very upset. You know, I'm a big fan of the FBI. I always have been, and mm -hmm. that they would have done this is, to me, hard to believe. And then, of course, Justice Department, with the meeting with Bill Clinton in the back of an airplane. Mm -hmm. uh, these things have never happened in our country. What's going on with our country and with law enforcement, This is these are things that have never happened. Right. It definitely is um, casting some doubt on the uh, you know, integrity of the justice system, and certainly we don't want that. But let me get back to immigration for a moment, because many are saying that your stance on immigration has changed. You have a lot of people opining on this, but I want to ask you directly, uh, do you believe in amnesty, and are you softening your tone? My stance is very strong. It's going to remain very strong. Uh, there will be no amnesty. There's no legalization. We're going to build a wall. It's going to be a tremendous, powerful wall. We're going to have great technology along with the wall, and we're going to stop people from coming in. Day one, we're going to get all of the gang members and the gang leaders and the drug dealers and all of these people that have illegally crossed, and they've been in our country. We're going to get them out mm -hmm. very, very, very fast. And we will, number one, I have to secure, and we have to secure the border. We're going to secure the border like it's never been secured before. We're going to stop the drugs from coming in. We're going to stop certain people, criminal elements from coming in, and uh, then we shall see what we shall see. Well, you know, as a prosecutor, I found it very frustrating that we were not observing and enforcing the laws that are on the books and that people would be a revolving door coming back in. I was a prosecutor in San Francisco, you know, and then the Kate Steinle case, tragedies like this. But at the same time, obviously you want to follow the laws on the books, but you have talked about mass deportation, and then also you have said that you have had families and people come forward to you. What about families that have been here 11 or 12 years that are established in the country? How do you feel about them now? Well, what we're going to do, and again, we're going to secure the border, and once the border is secured and we get rid of the criminal elements, which I'm going to start before the wall, before anything, we're going to start that day one, uh, we will look into various situations. But again, People are here illegally, and we have to remember that. They're here illegally. We have many people, Kimberly, mm -hmm. trying to come into our country, and they're going through a legal process, and they're waiting on line to come into our country. We have to remember that we have a country that's based on laws, and the people are here illegally. So we will see what we will see. But we're going to start off by securing the border, by getting rid of a horrible criminal element that's causing tremendous havoc, drug dealers, gang members, etc., and uh, I think people will be extremely happy. And I'll be announcing something within the next two weeks, a very comprehensive plan on immigration. All right. I'm sure many people will be looking forward to that. And let's talk a little bit about your campaign. You've had some recent changes. You brought someone on that uh, I admire, Kellyanne Conway, as your campaign manager, to note specifically that's the first female campaign manager for a presidential election. So that is uh, something that is historically establishing, uh, you know, a new first. And then also right. you brought on uh, Breitbart uh, News Chairman Steve Bannon as the CEO. How do you see these two uh, changes, these two new hires have impacted your campaign? Well, I think they're going to be great. I mean, it's new and, and uh, you know, they've just started, but they've both been doing very well. And I think that they are going to be a great addition. I, I will say you see the polls are 
getting very, very close. Uh, some of the individual states are literally, I mean, uh, we're winning in some of the big states. And so I think you're probably seeing that. I assume you're reporting on it at some point. Yes. You probably uh, know exactly what I'm talking about. But we've been doing very well over the last week and a half or two weeks. Yeah, the polls definitely were seeing a tightening in the polls and also in some of the numbers with the Hispanic community as well. Some of those numbers right. have just come right. out, so that is significant. And let's talk about this. A lot of people that know you, that have known you for many, many years, uh, talk about, uh, you know, your, your temperament, your tone, somebody that uh, your son, Eric, has called you, you know, a humble man, uh, people that work for you like you. But you have also said that you had some regrets when it comes to some of the things that you have said during this campaign. Is there anything specifically that you feel at this point that you regret or do you want to reach out to different communities or people? Well, I just, you know, I, we're running a campaign. I think we're doing a good job. We started off with 17 people. We're now down to one. I've never done it before. I'm a businessman. I built a great business, an unbelievable company with some of the great assets of the world, some of the great real estate assets of the world. And, you know, I'm having fun doing this where it's a movement. You know, as you know, when we go out and speak, when we have events, we get numbers that nobody has really gotten before. I mean, probably ever. You know, they talk about it as though ever. Uh, your friend Bill O'Reilly said this, that he's never seen. It's the greatest political phenomena that he's ever seen. The, the rallies that we have are amazing. And I will say this uh, on temperament. You know, I think temperament, and a lot of people have said that, uh, that know me, that maybe my greatest strength is my temperament. And I have a temperament that wins. I have a winning temperament. Uh, Hillary Clinton is really unfit to be president, and you see that with all of the things that she's done, all of the lies, all of the deception, the emails, the the uh, all of the terrible, terrible things that she's done. She's really unfit to be president. I think as far as I'm concerned, you know, that they have a Madison Avenue term, but I think probably maybe one of my greatest assets, if not my greatest asset, Kimberly, is temperament. I know how to win, and I have a winning temperament, and that's what our country needs. We don't win anymore. We're going to start winning again. All right. Mr. Trump, thank you so much for being with us here tonight and going on the record. Thank you very much, Kimberly.